Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Great Britain, episode number 8. <clears throat> the only change I've done in the off-season, off, off season, the off-camera time, is I've decided to move the Baldric to uh, Southeast Asia. The, the Awaken is still supposed to be moved to the Caribbean on uh, Foreign Station. We'll take that off next turn. And uh, this is just because the Baldric and the Black Adder naturally belong together, both being from the... Um, show with, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on his name, Rowan Atkinson, uh, well, he was the, pretty much the, one of the only actors on, uh, The Black Adder. So, there, that's, that's what I wanted to say about that, and now we are going to jump forward, probably end the war in this episode, and, uh, probably get our Dreadnought done. Ooh, but, gems, this is a very fortuitous start to the episode. With our fleet firmly in control of the waters of the Mediterranean, we've invaded, invaded, Tunisia. So we'll add Tunisia to the current invasion of Algiers and see how that works out for us. So I know there's a lot of um, raiding, uh, a lot of raiding going on from the French side and none on our side that I can see, but that is kind of countered by the fact that we are blockading them. I think I even read at one point the developer this might, okay, very low confidence in this, maybe 75% confidence um, that this is right. That the developer said if you blockade somebody they have less ships about to raid which makes sense but i might be mm, totally wrong on that anyways our first engagement of this episode will be the argonaut fighting a french raider i hope it is not an armored cruiser but these smaller type battles although we might even just run away from them um they're pretty good when we're already so far ahead in uh uh, in victory points because you don't stand to lose as much and we're not so far ahead that our victory is like totally secure what I plan to do is probably turn and run away if it is a light cruiser we will pursue so let's just get going the opposite direction they're in the wind advantage right now anyway okay so it's a cold I mean if it's a light cruiser versus light cruiser we don't have any I don't think we have any excuse not to engage so um, we'll be moving pretty quick in these episodes if they're, uh, if it's such a small, that, is this ship faster than me? No. We are being outrun though. Slowly outrun. Um, okay, some course changes. I think we landed a few hits. I'm just looking at the red dots here. I think we landed a few hits on the red. Uh, we can actually tell what's happened so far. Yep, just two six-inch shells. Obviously, we only have our forward firing gun available. Okay, this is where things get interesting. Wow, it looks like they hit us one time, but we landed a fearsome broadside at some point with four, count it, four of our guns hitting, I mean, supposedly. And they look like they're going down for the count already. So we'll just try to keep our distance and continue to rake them with fire. We don't want to get it into torpedo range, even though we could finish them. Yeah, that was really good. So our first, I would say, decisive performance by the light cruisers, where they came heavily ahead. Now, that was only a 600 victory point thing, so we could lose, let's just assume a victory point loss for us um, with a light cruiser would be about 1,000. So it would be a significantly worse. I just want to check my messages. Are we having money taken away? Blockade of enemy. Um, I see this naval budget. I think I scanned briefly and I was like, oh my gosh, we do, we are having money taken away. Because we do need to design and actually launch a new ship. Mm, you know, we have so many armored cruisers that have been asked for. Maybe I should just make another one of those. Um, because we do have the money to do it. I would love to save this, all this money. Definitely would love to save all that money for the Dreadnought that we're going to get. But the problem is we don't have better guns yet. We need higher quality guns. So let's just wait for a moment. Okay. 10-inch battery. Oh yeah, that's our slew of 10-inch batteries have been complete. Completed. We sank a submarine. Um, five ships total. Battle and support of land combat, well, we obviously have to accept this. It doesn't look like they only have anything left in the Mediterranean. Okay, so again, I'm still not sure if, when the enemy can't muster enough ships if that counts as a victory, as obviously it should, but just not sure. 
since we did complete an armored cruiser, I will. I guess I'm just gonna build one more. Um, I don't have the list. Oh, uh, people wanted to know where they are on the list. I have compiled just the uh, copy and pasted uh, these things that you remember. Probably I can get rid of the YouTube username, but I'll leave it because it doesn't really matter. Um, but if you want to find your ship, just find your username. And the pink ones are the ones that have already been constructed. So this is how I'm maintaining the list. You can see that this is as of April 28th. So we have 165 names. Um, if you, looking at this list, like maybe JTM here, who wants the HMS Defiant, but he's 93rd on the list and only wants a battle cruiser for it, or you know, better case here is the greatest manifesto. If you are coming in and saying, hey, I want that, um, you might look and see how far down the list you are and remember, type the words redo. I guess it won't let me here, but right here, redo. Just do this. You can do it in bold, bold if you want. Let that be the first word in your um, comments when you comment to redo your name. Just put redo. And then um, I, or Incompetent Idiot, has been doing a lot of upkeep with this, so thanks to him. Um, we will find your original entry. So if this was Folk Wilhelm, we'll find it and we'll change it. Now, obviously Folk Wilhelm has nothing to worry about. He's definitely going to get a dreadnought because he's first on the list to go. But um, if you're way down here, consider just adding a redo. And so, like I said, it's a very bottom of the list here. Let's see. Uh, uh, responder. Oh. Let's see. Somebody who didn't care what ship they get. It's interesting. Okay, so here we go. Shane Delamore, probably the lowest ranking BC I see, um, BC only. You might want to redo it and say, okay, BC, but also a CL, because I'm not even sure if you'll get a CL. Okay, so I'll put the um, a link to this in um, probably in the video description, but probably also I'll just more visibly, I'll just pin it in a comment. So you can do it that way. Okay, but that said, we have one more. You know what, I'm just gonna rename this off camera. So it'll be the Europa for now, and then I'll rename it because I'm not gonna go through that list, which I could have just done right there, but I didn't um, just grab the next one. So we'll do it this way. Fighting continues in Tunisia. So the Houston, looks like our ship should be better than that. Hong Kong, okay, another one. We'll accept, they decline. Yeah, I'm gonna decline raid on coastal shipping. Doesn't sound interesting. Cruiser action, this does. They can't, yeah, so. End of the war very soon, right? Very, very soon. Okay, better rate of fire. Very nice. Um, interesting, the war dog in the Caribbean has another opportunity to show her true metal. The last engagement was, I think for them, just running down a bunch of armored cruisers which is fine for me and uh, the British people. It's a nice victory. Terrible visibility. What time are we at? Is it just because it's raining? Yeah, heavy rain means the visibility is less than the torpedo range. This might even go on without us detecting them. Oh, God. Well, they were hitting us before we even, well, let's see, what were they hitting us with? Light guns. I have no idea what this ship is. They've already done, Pretty good day. Look at gale winds. So us being in the right spot is going to be extremely important. Okay, we have an Algier class. We actually are landing a few hits. Fantastic. They only have four inch guns. Okay, let's slow this down to normal. And let's just try to do our best to keep up with this thing and put the put the hurt on. Close if you can. Another hit. I mean, even at this at this range, I don't think the wind is even has much time to affect your shot. Uh, we can actually see the distance to target down here. The distance is, huh? It's almost a full nautical mile. That's not that's not as close as I was expecting it to be. So yeah, it's definitely possible for the <laughs> wind. I was thinking maybe like a quarter of a mile. The wind doesn't really have that much of a chance, but we're still a little bit further than that. And I, I do want to get on the southern side because then we'll start getting a wind bonus instead of a wind penalty. Anyways, it appears that this ship is not able to fire anything at us. <laughs> so far, I don't think we've taken maybe one or two hits, if that. 
just the first one. Yeah, the first hit. Uh, sometimes people usually projected back in the day that the person who fires and lands the first hit wins, but in this case we see here the rare counter example. Okay. That wind. Uh, where steam is blowing like further ahead than we are. I mean the okay, it's taking the BSCA. It looks like we're going to let lose them in the poor conditions. Yeah, this is probably a lost cause. Probably should have just locked onto them from the beginning. I don't know where they are. Okay, we'll see if they get hold up against this island. If they do, good. If they don't, well, that's fine too. We'll just go about our merry way. So we'll just kind of peruse this, see if we find them. No. So where would they have gone? Uh, the nearest French port is south, southeast, so I think. In any case, that's, that's that. So, wow. Marginal victory. We didn't do nearly as much damage as I, as I expected. Considering those hits were pretty close, I'm surprised that they didn't penetrate. I don't think wind is taken into the account when you... I don't think they do any kind of modeling for like the wind slowing down the shells. And actually, they were downwind of us, so... Although that's bad for smoke, that would be uh, something good for the shell velocity. Which, I, again, I don't think that's actually taken into account, but... Okay... I don't like uh, the do the two different guns. Okay, 14 inch guns, that's perfect. So we know what our Dreadnought will be. Cruiser action, this one we can't avoid. They, But they can't, <laughs> I guess we can't avoid it because they, um, well, they refuse to muster ship. So it's time to do a design. It's, oh man, overdue time. Now I, gosh golly gee whiz, I forget the name that I'm supposed to be using for this. Um, I'm going to have to bring up, okay, good. I have it up. We're saved. One moment. Let's just design it first and then I'll bring it up in the, in, in a moment. Maybe I'll just cut off screen real fast, but this is going to be our nice, uh, first dreadnought 14 inch guns. Yes. Now we're going to clear this. We're not going to be, this is going to be, um, our first all big gun, our, yeah, first all big gun ship. I don't think we can do this. Okay, 20%. One question I have, still haven't seen an answer about this. Probably should just ask on the forum. Can, does the rate of fire penalty get removed after you have the, re the required technology? Or do you need the technology, required technology, at the time that you're designing and building the ship to not suffer the penalty? Because I'm not sure... I think I'll still take the 20% rate of fire penalty because these ships will be deployed all around the world and probably in bad conditions then. So we'll take them in turrets, actually, not casemate. And I won't be using tertiaries. That's something I'm considering doing. Actually, to be honest, the best time to use tertiaries if you're going to is probably right now at the very beginning because um, the range of the fights would be close um, since we don't have that good of range. Um, it makes it more likely that you're going to use your tertiary guns, but I still think we'll avoid it for the time being. I haven't given any, I haven't, I don't really know. I haven't done any good testing of tertiary guns, whether they're worth it or not, but I suspect they are not. Okay, so let's get 19, 10 inch belt, it's fine. We'll be using, yeah, deck 2.5, deck extended 2, Kind tower 12 is fine. 11 for our turrets. Secondary is down to two. What's our current local yard? Wow, we have plenty of tonnage to do what I want to do then, which is unfortunately not going to be possible with what I wanted to do. Darn it. Okay, well, um, Let's just clear this. Forward, center line, is aft, aft, center line. So we could build this, right? Yeah, of course it's a BB, yeah. I don't want to. Interesting, so they don't 
allow oh i don't have half center line superimposed okay the thing i want is the wing guns so i might even hold off on that design for a little bit longer just because i want those wing guns then we can get like a one two three four a four-sided broadside which would be fantastic okay let's keep pushing industrial production is soaring very good we've taken control of tunisia no, to the fire control. Again, the thing with the fire control is if you accept the fire control, the better fire control. It's true that the new ships, it only takes one month. It's free. Um, I mean, it takes one more month of paying for um, construction, which is not free. I should say it's pretty expensive, but you don't have to do a full retrofit for it. The problem is um, then you, when you redo the class, that gets named as a new class. So that new Albion would be the Albion 19, you know, 1904 and now every time I redesign the Albion I have to redesign it twice one for the old Albions and one for the ones that came out at 1904 uh, it's just kind of a pain and it's just uh, it's really considering the ships are identical you can get them back although they diverge in 1904 with different fire control you can you know converge them with just getting the old ones to have the same fire control, but the game doesn't recognize them as the same model then. So you just have to redesign half of them uh, differently every single time. I'm gonna keep accepting those in the Mediterranean. We have the joy of getting constant dec uh, um, battlefield, or sorry, battle de declinations, I guess it would be. The declining of the battles. Um, coastal bombardment, that's an interesting one. I don't think we need to do it, although it's kind of an interesting year. Uh, let me decline. No, I'll decline that one as well. Cruiser action in the Caribbean. No, they have two CAs. Let's decline that as well. That was kind of costly in terms of victory points, but I didn't even notice that the blockade is somehow, like, just the constant blockade is, I guess, brought us all the way up to 30,000. I'm expecting this war to end with the collapse of the French government very soon, though. Okay. <laughs> so sooner than I expected. The government of France has collapsed in revolution. The prime minister has been deposed. They have been forced to accept harsh peace conditions. Well, we get uh, one of their ships first and foremost. Now, importantly, it's very it's key to note that you can scroll over and actually look at the ships you're trying to get. I don't even think I want their 13-inch ship, though. It's only it's two single turrets too because it's a one 13 inch gun in the front one in the back that's terrible i might go for this which is probably their oldest design but it's one where they don't use seven inch guns they're using six inch guns which to me is more sensible okay let's just be realistic here let's take their most expensive darn ship and let's just sell it so fifteen thousand one hundred. That's actually bigger. The Magenta. Yeah, we'll take the class's namesake as a, like, a way, true, true scorn we're showing. We're going to take this. Now, this is also important. Oh, we can take Corsica. Well, how big of a holding in the Mediterranean do we want? I feel like our first priority should be Southeast Asia. You know what? That's not true. Let's take Corsica because it's going to be easier to swap ships from Mediterranean to um, to Northern Europe. So the more, I don't know, damage is the right word, but the more damage, I guess I'll use say, uh, the more damage we can do in the Mediterranean, the better. I don't care about anything else. Let's just take like Cochin China as the other one. And now I'm talking, these are all acceptable choices. We'll take Cochin China though. Um, and that's our point allotment. Now again, that was only two things, but technically, with the Navy evidently having more funding, they can use the defense. No, you bastard. Oh, that's a new thing. Wait, was that wing turrets? I, I clicked by it way too quickly. Oh, they've stole turrets and gun mountings from us. What shall we ever do about this? Okay, give me the note that says what I just got. What did we just get? Main battery wing turrets. Perfect freaking timing. Unfortunately, the the least un good timing because 
They took our money. Which means maybe I'll just scrap this Europa. <sighs> it's like 16. Okay, I'm going to scrap it. We'll scrap this. Okay. It's definitely not worth it, but it, they took all the extra money anyway. I'm going to scrap it mainly for the cost per month, not because of anything else. So we do that, and now we go to design our new ship, which we clear, and we auto-generate, and it's going to give us the wing. This is exactly what I wanted, but nope, we want 14-inch guns. We'll take this right up to the limit, and then ease it off if we have the, the tonnage to spare. Why not just build the best of the best, though? Let's build the, the best of the best in terms of ships. I think that belt extended at three is sufficient because that's is enough to stop a lot of the light cruiser penetration. Um, so maybe we'll do 3.5. How much is it? Yeah, it's only, it's pretty light. As it is right now, we're, we can't build the ship, but we'll get there. Oh, God. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> hmm. Need more than this. Lordy, heavens. Okay, this is definitely weighing a lot more than I expected. How do we change this? Well, we lower the belt. We just start making some armor adjustments. My goodness. We are still 1,200 overweight. Now, I won't compromise on this. This is definitely the design I want. And we just finished, yeah, okay, so that, what do I do then? Huh. It's tough. I want to build it just how it is. So our four-sided, this is um, true to the layout of the Dreadnought, the original HMS Dreadnought as well. Of course, their ship was kind of funny. It came out like this, and then it jutted out where these uh, side batteries were. The, the nose looked like this, and then it literally jutted out like this to <laughs> have the wing turret. So this could actually fire straight forward. I don't think they... Yeah, they didn't model it in this, but the actual HMS Dreadnought could fire her wing turrets um, at zero degrees, at perfectly dead ahead without doing anything. I don't know if they ever would have fired it like that because it'd be cutting it close. I don't know if the shell, the um, the shockwave or the air turbulence of the shell might have ripped stuff off the side because it's, it's right at the blast point. So they probably wouldn't have fired that close, but it was able to aim that way. The pictures show it. So how are we gonna get around this? I can go down to 2.5. I can go down to 2 on the deck and the deck extended, which is a little bit weird, but that saved us a ton. Maybe we just take damage from the deck. No, that's, too, that's not saving us a whole lot. What if we go down to 10 on the turrets? Okay. Obviously very dangerous. Now we're working with um, not just two turrets, which can have flash fires, but a total of five. So it's pretty dangerous, but... These are the kind of compromises we're going to have to make to get this thing to float. Let's clear our torpedo mounts. I don't, no, I really don't like doing that. How low on secondaries will we have to go? Five, six inch guns. This is horrendous. It's kind of an interesting idea. We're basically saying what about the, this is insane, but we've never done it. When they say all big gun ship, why do they not mean actually all big guns? I was thinking of reducing the six inch guns to zero, I mean to 10, sorry, you saw that. Um, but the, the problem with, yeah, maybe we will bring this down so I think we could get five inch guns, no problem. Uh, basically, I'm trying to make the secondaries only capable of warding off destroyers. And five inch hits on a destroyer would be pretty punishing. Okay, design rationale for just eliminating secondary guns or making them weaker or whatever. This is what I'm thinking. And we want to move this back a bit. There, that looks much better. You get a penalty when your secondary guns 
fire at uh, a, a target when your primary guns are already firing at it. Or just any time more than one ship's... Uh, okay, any time that more than one ship is firing at a target, there's a penalty. But on top of that, and in addition to that, if a, the same ship, any same ship, has more than one gun caliber firing, so any, one more, any more than just one gun set firing at a target, you also get this penalty, because which doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, it makes sense when you have multiple 14-inch uh, guns firing from different ships that you don't know which splash came from which ship, but usually 5-inch shells and 14-inch shells should be uh, leaving very different splash uh, splashes, I guess. Anyway, um, if we eliminated these all together then, one, we'll be able to get better armor, which would be nice. I think this is what I want to do. I've never done this before, a ship that does not have secondary guns. Um, this will obviously have to be under heavy escort, but if you're going to pick a nation where you can afford to do escorts, probably the first one would be United States, but one of the top ones would be Great Britain. So let's try to do this. It's a bit crazy, but it'll be a fun experiment, I feel. And even though we just raised our deck and our deck extended and belt, I mean, this stuff is not very high. Turrets is only still at 10, which I, I don't think I can do that. Let's take this back down to 2. I don't think we'll need more than that. Let's get turrets up to 11. Can we get this to 10.5? We can if we drop this by 1. Let's do it. Okay. So kind of a crazy design. A true Dreadnought, though. I mean, the Dreadnought was an experiment. And this is what this sh ship will be. It will be literally big guns only. <laughs> that was originally meant to mean not mixing main caliber guns, but we're not even mixing secondary caliber guns, just main guns. I kind of like it. Now, I guess I will need to pull up my list. And let me get the name of the class that it should be. Okay. We only had battle cruisers named. Hmm. Then I don't know what. Uh, well, we'll call it something uh, that we decide then. <laughs> the Rodney. This is funny if you've watched my um, Atlantic Fleet playthrough. You know what? Let's call it the. No, I'm actually trying to think. I'm trying. I'm going to try to get an actual Rodney type ship in the game later. So. Uh, no, no. Okay, let's just call it the Renown. It will be Renown for its crazy design. <laughs> uh, no torpedo protection, which is the only thing I'm kind of really missing on it, but yeah, we'll just test it out. You know, the best, the good thing about this is we do have the ability, if we need, to um, just make a new class. If this one doesn't really suit us, we can just go ahead. We usually have the money and uh, and build another one. So gonna just put these in here that's 15 that's probably fine okay so we're negative 12 but we still have like basically like 10 months before that catches up with us so the first five are being laid down and we'll lay down a few more when we have the money to do so okay I think we're ready to push on several turns then okay 28 minutes into this video, we still probably can go another five at least. Right wing politicians attack the government saying that we have too few armored cruisers. Well, just wait a merry moment. That should be changing very, very soon. No, not really. Wait, why, do I, why do they say this? Let's take a look at the state of the affairs of the world in 1904, really at the end of 1904. First five years, basically. Um, our budget is by far the highest. And I think a lot of that is now having to do with the fact that we just gobbled up a whole bunch of France. We have dreadnoughts laid down. The first ones were laid down by the United States in this world. They have also laid down two battle cruisers, those crazy fools, but very weak ones, 17,000 tons for, you know, on average for both of them. We have the most number of battleships. We don't have the most number of, we don't have the most number of armored cruisers. That is for sure. But remember, we lost one or two. 
I forget. Let's take a look. Yeah, we lost two. Well, that's a bit unfortunate. But I don't think I can... I know that we scrapped an armored cruiser, and now it'd be easy to second-guess that decision. I am certainly second-guessing that decision. <laughs> uh, but oh, <coughs> if we don't have these complaints, we'll certainly get more mileage out of our dreadnoughts. So let's get better docks. We probably won't need the better docks ever now, but let's use it to embarrass. So we need to push for tensions and push for budget up. Because now the prestige has already worked itself into... I already just feel like around 30 or so prestige is fine for the rest of the game. For the French have gotten better 12-inch guns. And that last log, at the very last thing is French 12-inch guns have better whatever. Oh, that's one thing we have to do as well as refit. But we'll do the refits a little bit closer to the um, next war. Ah, throat is parched, sorry, if you're hearing my drinking of water on camera. Elba, that's not a bad design. Okay, 8-inch guns, we have the 10-inch guns, so we should have the superior firepower, but I would be threatened by this ship. It's a, it's a pretty solid design. Take away the tertiaries, add a few extra 5-inch secondaries. Maybe a half-inch more deck armor would be really good. Decent ship. Better torpedo technology. Okay. That's okay. We could have used those weight savings a couple months earlier, but it's not so bad. Uh, we will always be doing strong responses because we're Great Britain and we're taking care of our world, our empire, which is, like I said, what we, we perceive it as the entire world. I think this is what... Oh, yeah, that's what we want. Oh, wow, cross-deck fire becomes available. Well, interestingly enough, we don't have the money for it, but this is going to set us up well for some battle cruiser designs. If we get four centerline turrets, that's even better. But if not, we can use cross-deck fire to uh, get four or even five sided broadsides for, for the price of only four or five turrets. So uh, the cross-deck fire obviously has a disadvantage that it's a very narrow window. You can actually get all the turrets firing on one side, but... Okay, and better destroyers. It might be time for a destroyer soon. No, no, it's, I take that back. It's too early. Shooting competition, maintenance increase. Okay, fine. Excellent idea. The Argonaut wins. She probably didn't need it. I'm pretty sure she was already elite. We have plenty of elite ships. Uh, one thing we could do to save money is, but our ships are elite, and this is still a question I have, I'm not sure, putting things, putting ships to reserve fleet um, reduces their crew quality, and it does take some time for the crew quality to get back up, but my question is, excuse me, oh, sorry about that, um, does the crew quality ever go back to what it originally was? So if I took the Viper, and I did um, reserve fleet, and then I did active fleet afterwards, would it go back to the same level elite? There's an obviously a number behind this word elite. Let's say that elite is, you know, 80 to 100. Let's say that this is 90. If I take it to reserve fleet, it probably drops down to like average, maybe like, or whatever, good, or maybe even, there's one below good, and I already am blanking on it, fair. Maybe fair is like 50. Drops down to 50 in reserve. When I put it back to active, does it go back up to 90? Or does it just go back up to the neutral position for my training priorities? Which very soon we'll have to change from night fighting to torpedo warfare, but we'll leave that for another five years or so. I don't know. It would be really interesting because if you could do reserve fleet and then back up to active fleet and not lose too much on the crew quality, then obviously that would be a fantastic idea for us right now. Didn't see that? No, nothing interesting. New docks are completed. I can build some more. So we're up to 26,000, it should be. Okay, here's their battle cruiser, the one that they were building, the 17,400 one. 24 knots, very, very slow, very low armor. You know, we might go to war with the United States, and I always said an early war with the United States would be the best because their, their economy just gets better and better over time. 
um, in relation to everyone else. I mean, everyone's economy grows in time, but theirs compared to everyone else's, their derivative is higher than ours. Okay, they stole some technology. Not a surprise, everyone's gonna be stealing technology from us. So, not a surprise. I see that this is almost dropped down to the level where we can build one more. I think this will be the last one I build too. Um, and then I will probably wanna see how these ships perform. And then six is enough for a class anyway. It's probably more than enough for capital ships. So we'll just switch over to battle cruisers after that and get those out. Good. Okay, this is the Vondertan. Okay, so they obviously also have cross deck fire which I think was mostly used by the Italians. If I'm not mistaken, it was the Italians who did cross deck fire, but might be pulling that from thin air. So um, anyway, the Vonderton cross deck fire with 11 inch guns, low armor, Not it's not bad for the deck. So if it stayed at range, but with 11 inch guns, it's not going to stay at range. So I'm not too worried about this. This will definitely hunt down and sink our armored cruisers, kind of rendering them useless now in the game, not in real life they would still have a lot of purpose, but we'll probably have to shift the armored cruisers over to um, foreign stations, basically. And that's what people usually do when they're playing against Great Britain, I'm sure. Okay, so we'll squeeze out a few more turns. Only 10 more months before we get these guys, and it doesn't look like we'll be at war before then, so that's good. Um, they want to buy the rights? Yeah. We'll, we'll sell the Japanese anything, because we don't expect they'll be making us uh, making any trouble for us okay better 12 inch guns I'm glad we waited on our retrofits now we have more to do um, I think also the retrofits will now unfortunately take longer but that's the price you pay for better guns and I would definitely pay that price for quality zero especially this early on we're definitely gonna be oh wow so the design I did have before would have been Oh, this is really interesting. It would have been slightly improved with this. Right now, my design is... Actually, it's pretty good still. Um, the rear gun... Let's see. Go to the design. The rear gun is only going to fire at 45 degree angles. Sorry. No. Just load. Open it. Don't be silly. So the rear one is only going to fire at the 45 degree angles, and the superimposed would be obviously much better than that. So any of them superimposed. Well, well, we can do the X. The X also allows the other one. And this one, okay, much superior. However, so this is the interesting design I was talking about, by the way. If we wanted to do cross deck, let's pretend that we're going to build a battle cruiser. So we'll just bump the speed up a whole bunch to pretend that. And... Okay, let's do something like 25. Um... Eliminate turret arcs. Right now we're doing this. Let's eliminate these two guns. If we wanted to do cross deck, we do, what is it? G and J. Cross deck fire. Did I get it right? Finally, I did it. <laughs> it's uh, there. So this would be actually a five. This was a, this is what I was referring to. I'm, I'm sorry. I really am having a hard time speaking <laughs> this video. I apologize, but uh, this would give us a five-sided broadside. We'd be favoring the rear, which is very very un-British of us. Uh, but you can see there's a very narrow window for the cross deck fire. Anyways, this is just an idea for a battle cruiser. You might be okay with this because I don't. Well, I don't know why. I mean. Honestly, dreadnoughts are more likely to be slow to move and turn and all that. Battle cruisers probably need to shift more often. It's just an idea, though. Uh, I think we'll continue to think about this while we don't have the budget to build anything anyway. Okay, so we're going on 40 minutes now. Let's just go ahead and call this video to a close here. Oh, let me first build better docks. With Great Britain, I really do find that you can use the bigger docks. In the United States as well. So, thanks for watching this episode. You can check out, again, the your ordering on the list if you're waiting for your ship. Um, if you decide to uh, offer yourself to serve for cheap, <laughs> if you reduce your um, recommendation to like less than just a battle cruiser or an armored cruiser or whatever, since we have probably reached the end of our armored cruisers and we have so many, so many people asking for battle cruisers, 
Uh, if you want to do that, just again, put redo in the very beginning of your comment. Go back. Um, I'll pin the list and I'll also pin um, it. The, okay, so then you can leave your name suggestion or your name on the list. That's in the video description. So uh, any other questions, just leave them in the comments. I wasn't extremely clear and it's actually rather late and I'm probably not being very eloquent. So let's just uh, leave it for the comments on another day when I will have hopefully a fresher brain. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching and until the next one, take care.